In this video, we will learn how to query multiple ClickHouse tables at the same time using the merge table function. It performs parallelized reading while including all unique columns and unifying shared ones to a common data type. So for example, if we had a date time in one table and date time 64 in the other table on the same column, it's going to go to date time 64 because that's the common type. If we do low cardinality string and string, it's going to be string. But if, for example, we do decimal and string, there isn't a common type. And so we're going to get a variant with decimal and string. So it's kind of the union of those types. Let's have a look at how this works with a real data set. So we're going to launch ClickHouse. I've got a database in tennis.chdb. I'm going to turn off pretty row numbers and put describe compact output on. Let's have a look what tables we've got. So you can see I've got some matches from the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, and 1990s. We can introduce this query here, which is going to show us all the columns in each of these tables side by side so we can see the difference between them. And so if we look at the differences, so you see if we go into the 1970s column and look at winner seed, we've changed that from nullable string to nullable uint8. If we come down a little bit, we've also changed the score from string to array string. And then if we come into the next column, so the 1980s column, we then change the winner seed and the loser seed to be nullable uint16. And then finally, if we come over to the 1990s column, we decide, okay, surface is going to be an enum, so that has hard clay, grass, and carpet. And then if we come down right to the bottom of that column, you can see we've added in two extra columns, so walkover and retirement. And notice that they're null on the previous three tables. We can then call it describe table and then use our merge table function and pass in a regex. So we're going to do ATP matches star. And you can see it comes back with the description of the combination of querying all our tables. So if we have a look at the fields which are in common, so we've got, for example, surface. So that's gone from an enum in the 1980s table and then a string in the other ones, and that's rounded up to a string. If we come down, we can see we've got the winner seed. So winner seed is a variant of string uint16 and uint8. Whereas if you look at loser seed, we didn't ever have the string, so that's just rounded up to a uint16. Score is a variant because we've got array string and string. And then finally, those new columns, walkover and retirement, they just have the new type and they're going to be effectively have null values for all the tables that don't have those fields. Let's have a look at how we can write a query. So I want to find all the people that John McEnroe beat where they were seeded, where his opponent was seeded number one. And so we can write that query and you can see it comes back with a bunch of different people. So remember, loser seed is always a numeric value. So it was uint8 or uint16. Now what happens if I only want to return the matches where McEnroe was seeded three or lower? So we'll keep the loser seed the same. And this time it's a bit trickier because we've got different types for the winner seed. So remember, we've got uint8, uint16, and string. And so what we can do is we can do a multi-if clause, and we'll say if the variant type of winner seed is uint8, then we're going to pull out that value and check it's greater than 3. If the variant type is uint16, again, we're going to pull, pull out that value and check it's greater than 3. And then finally, we know that if it's, the, if it's not any of those, it's going to be a string. And so we'll cast it to a uint16 and check that it's greater than or equal to 3. And then it comes back with a smaller set of matches. The other cool thing we have is this underscore table variable that's there. And so that will tell us well, which table did the row actually come from. And so if we see if we run that query, we see the first row is from the 1970s table, and then the other three are from the 1980s table. Let's have a look at another query. So if we say I want to get the table and where they have the walkover and get the count uh, from all the tables and group it by everything and order by the table, you can see we've got 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s have all got null for walkover, and then it just counts how many rows we've got in each of those tables. Whereas 1990s, we can see that there were 128 walkovers and then 37,000 no walkovers. And so if we want to get the walkovers for the other ones, we kind of need to write another multi-if. So we say if walkover is not null, then we're going to use walkover. Otherwise, if the variant type is array string, so remember we changed that score field, then we're going to have to do this a little bit complicated function. So we're going to have to say two boolean and then array exists and check for the walkover to exist somewhere, having pulled the value out from using the variant element function. And then finally, if it's not going to be an array string, we know it's going to be a string, so we can just check, do a, like a like statement and check whether the WO exists in the string, and we can do our count. And you see we get back now, we have a result of the walkovers or not walkovers for each of the tables. If you liked this video, check out this playlist up here for more cool ClickHouse content.